Artificial turf has come a long way over the years, and it's hard enough to tell the difference between it and real grass. And now, you can choose between different styles, colors, lengths, and even function. Today, we are pushing the limits of artificial grass, and we are building a putting green on a beautiful backyard hillside in Northern California. I have a love-hate relationship with artificial turf. The amount of effort it takes to make this product look absolutely perfect is astounding. But in the end, it all pays off and you'll have a product that is low maintenance, environmentally friendly, and freaking badass. Now, let me take you that back to the beginning. Once your base is prepped and you know what shape and size you want your putting green to be, you need to set the cups. This is the first step. It's very simple, but crucial you get this right. Dig out the holes and backfill with gravel to help with drainage. Set the cups using mortar to ensure that the cups will stay in place over time. Use a level to make sure that the cups are level and the height of the top of the cup is level or just under the finish height of your putting green turf to ensure the ball rolls directly into the cup and doesn't pause or stop on the edge. Once the putting green turf is on site and ready to go, lay it out and start to make the shape. Using chalk is probably the easiest method to visualize what shape you want in the end. When the lines seem perfect and to your liking, use a carpet cutter to cut out the edges. Quick tip here, making sure the carpet cutter flows smoothly through the turf is so important because it keeps the edges rounded and makes those corners really, really nice and smooth. The putting green is now shaped and you have to start to install seam paper. The seam paper levels out the playing field when you attach your fringe later on. Cut out the strips and tuck it half under the putting turf and nail it down in place. Once your putting turf is cut and the paper was trimmed and tucked, start to insert the fringe around the edge. Use a straight edge to cut it and make sure that the edge between the putting green turf and the fringe is exact. There's little margin for error here, so don't cut corners and make sure this step is really, really perfect. Now you see it's starting to look a lot better now, but the most time consuming part has just begun. Nailing in the turf is by far the most tedious, but very important structurally and aesthetically. Generally, you should be nailing every two to four inches using these types of nails. Three and a half inch finished nails for the green, three and a half inch common nails for the fringe to green connection, and five and a half inch turf nails for the fringe alone. Any seams that you have in your turf Make sure to cut out various patterns depending on the direction of the turf, and then use adhesive and glue to seam them together. Make sure there are no visible seam lines and the turf flows smoothly in both directions. Now for the best part, the infill. On this job, we use three types of infill to weigh the turf down and to make sure the blades were standing straight up and the end product looked realistic. We use number 16, number 20 for the fringe, and number 30 for the putting green. Then over the whole entire area, we use a camel fill just to make sure that that turf was nice and blended in. Adding up and averaging about two to three pounds of infill per square foot is crucial to make sure that your turf is weighed down and the grass blades are standing up over time. Using a power broom makes easy work of evenly spreading and working in the infill into the grass. And for the putting green, using a hard bristle rake helps vibrate and push the infill in even more if that power broom doesn't do it. A lot goes into the construction of a putting green. Details matter and every cut counts. Taking your time to ensure perfection is worth every minute. And now you have a badass putting green.